Now, um, I wanted to do the introduction from Hebrews 6 and uh, in the first service, and that's where it ended after an hour. So most probably we will just do the introduction uh, today, now again, but we started to talk from Hebrews 5 from verse 11 in the retreat, where we did a lot of teaching in this line, but let me quickly read that. We have much to say about this, about the word, about the, the truth, about teaching. But it is hard to make it clear to you because you no longer try to understand. We talked about that and how the church, that we need Holy Spirit to, to bring us into that point that we will try to understand. There's a lot of things that the writer is saying to the Hebrews and uh, He's saying, I cannot speak about the depth of this teaching. I cannot give you this meat. I cannot give you this quality of teaching because you're not trying to understand anymore. So many times, my brother and sister, in the past, not hopefully in the future anymore, we can read a word, we can hear a teaching, we can sing, but trying to really push into the place of touching that what God is saying to me. When you know when you get the revelation of what God is saying, you are touching Him. It's not about just hearing a teaching. It's not just about understanding the logic of a teaching, but to touch Him in the teaching. Because He is the living Word. He is. He is the Word. So when I interact with the Word, can I touch Him in what I hear? Let's say that. Can I touch him in what I hear? That you hear in the context of relationship. Amen. Too many times we can get so negative in the past. Not anymore. Some people can get negative or depressed or so full of anxiety. And I so speak the anxiousness. I so speak the stress. I so speak the negativity that I'm touching that spirit, I'm touching this demon of negativity, this demon of depression, this demon of whatever, compromise. And I'm starting to have this interaction, and that's where the word says, do not have fellowship with demons. Who of you say, demon, come here, uh, devil, come here, I want to have fellowship with you. Who on earth will do that? But if I talk the talk, if I start to talk the talk more and more and more, in what I say, I start to have a relationship with this demon. But so, it's only, he can only fake something of something that is actually true. And the true is that I so interact with the word, so try to understand that at the end of the day, I'm touching him in my understanding of the word. May God help you. May God help me in that. Amen. He says, I cannot share with this with you because you don't any longer trying to understand. In fact, though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you the elementary truths. Elementary truths of God's word. All over again. You need milk, not solid food. Anyone who lives on milk, being still an infant, is not acquainted with a teaching about righteousness. You do not know. You do not know. You do not understand the teaching of your stature in Christ. Righteousness. But solid food is for the mature. Who by constant use. Everybody say constant use. Have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil. We talked about this quite intensely. Because there's a tree of knowledge of good and evil where the, the snake can tell you the difference between good and evil. Where well, you can stand on the right and the wrong, but there's a right and wrong to distinguish between good and evil that comes from the interaction with the Word of God under the guidance of the Spirit. And you need that. Because there's guys out there that knows the difference between good and bad. Good, the good and the evil. And they're not saved. They don't know Christ at all. But some of them are so accurate and getting such, such a lifestyle of excellence 
without God. But that is knowing it at the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And not coming into the truth and let Holy Spirit opening it up for you. What is good? What is evil? What is, and the good is about what is God and what is not God. Because the good that you know is God that is good. There's a good out there. That is still a good principle. But God is not necessarily in that good. Are you with me? But to have an interaction where God is the good in your life, God is the goodness in your life, you need the Spirit of God. You need to jump into the Word where it's not like, Wah, open the mouth, infant, let's give some food. No. But then you start yourself to know how to deal with the food and how to make it part of your life so that you can grow up by practicing constant use by practicing the word by constant use you using the word somebody know how to use somebody they are just using me you anybody heard that before somebody saying you are they are just using me may you just use the word of god and not manipulate not just let it be a fly by night, whatever you want to call it. Let it not just be a religious interaction. Because if I take it in a religious way, the only interaction that I have is I have fellowship with a, with a spirit of religion. I don't have an interaction between me and the word of God. There is no interaction if it's not the spirit opening it up for you. So you, I can sit with the word and have fellowship with demons. I can sit with the word and I fellowship with performance and, and, and a spirit of self-condemnation. And I read the word and I, I'm just in trouble. I'm just in trouble. I'm just in trouble. I can have fellowship with other demons while reading the word. It's dangerous. But when you go to the word, God, speak to me through your word. Help me from my heart to your heart, your heart to my heart. The deep will call unto deep from the depths of the richness of the glory of who you are in the word. That's, I start with a choice that I will respect the word and I will know this word is precious. Amen. May God help you. May God help me. So all of this, then he says, therefore, let us move beyond. Everybody say beyond. The elementary teachings about Christ and be taken forward to maturity, not laying again the foundation of. Now, the words from, the word from Nehemiah, Nehemiah 3 and 4 is about the man that went there and he came back and he encouraged them and said, Whoa, it's time to go and rebuild the walls. Rebuild the walls. We will get into that, and maybe next Sunday or the Sunday after that, into the rebuilding of the walls of Jerusalem, where we're looking forward for the new Jerusalem that will come from heaven. And where does it fit in with the walls? In what we actually prophetically must do in the season. But going back into that, he's talking here about first laying foundations. And my brother and my sister, we can stay with elementary teachings till we die. And we are just laying foundations, and then it's cracked, and we must lay it again, and then it's cracked, and we must lay it again. And who finds it very exciting to have one building, and for 60 years we are just laying the foundation, and it's cracked, we must laying the foundation, it's wrong, we are laying the foundation, it's the wrong material, and that's all. We never get into a life where we build a life where the life is built on the rock, so that when the storm comes, you don't pray against the storm. Because it was God sent the storm. Heaven and earth, the devil will shake heaven and earth. No. God will shake the heavens and the earth still once more. So that he can brag with his church that is built on the rock. And the rock is the revelation of who he is. He wants to show he wants to give the revelation of who he is through the foundation of the church. And that is me and you. So there will be storms, 
they will be shaking because God wants to brag about how you have built with him foundations in your life. So that the world, in the midst of the storm, when everybody wants to freak out, in the freaking out, there will be a wow. And the wow will be when the world, in their freaking out, will look at the church and they will say, how do they get right that the house is still standing? It's impossible. Yes, it's impossible if it's not for God. But with God, all things are possible. And that's going to happen. More and more in the end time, they will be, people will, God will brag about his church. As we, as we said already, that God said, with the, with the end time, there will be the shaking, there will be the wars and the rumors of wars and the earthquakes and the pestilence and all those stuff will happen, but still not the end. And then in the gospel will be preached to all the nations and then the end will come. And that will be through a victorious church. That through the fire, through the shaking, they will stand with a the quality. They will stand with a quality that is from heaven. Let it be today for you. Let it be today for you in Jesus' name. Are you still with me? I cannot just have the baby saying amen. I need you also to say amen. Are you with me? Now, in all of this, we must first look at the, this elementary foundation teaching that I need to settle that now. I need to settle this now in Jesus' name, in my life. There are six foundations, six that you will find there in Hebrews 6 verse, as from verse 2, before verse 2. We need to be taken forward into maturity, not laying the foundation of what? Repentance from dead works. Faith in God. The teaching of the baptisms. The laying on of hands. The resurrection of the dead. And eternal judgment. And God permitting, we will do so. May God give us the grace that the foundations will be established in our lives. You know, with the church globally, when the church went into the dark ages, history, you will look at church history maybe one time, we will take an hour just about that. With, with church history, the church went into the dark ages where there was darkness and the light of the word was not there. And then God used the Luther and he came and he laid, brought back the first foundation repentance from dead works not through paying for your sin to be forgiven hello but from a repentance from within with a second point faith in god that the righteous and that we will be saved through faith and the righteous will walk by faith that was luther that was calvin that was a lot of guys that brought the church back into a lot of facets and then even the Pente pentecostalism when the holy spirit was poured out we'll get into that a little bit later but these six foundations need to be established in your life and my life first of all repentance from dead works what, what, where, where do you find it that's where prayer and communication is the first thing in your life where you came to God and you didn't, they just, you didn't just say sorry Lord and carry on and sorry Lord and carry on in the sorry there was a repentance that's a turn around what shall we do? We crucified the Lord. The guy said when Peter stood up after, after the day of Pentecost. He said repent. And that means turn around. First foundation, repentance from dead works. Then faith. You need faith to move forward. But faith comes from hearing. Hearing comes from the word of God. You cannot move forward if this is not foundational. Repentance because you heard the word that you are on your way to hell. And God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So out of darkness means turn around so that you can get out of darkness. But as you turn around to get out of darkness, without the word, you cannot get out of darkness. Lamp unto my feet. Hello? Light. So at the end of the day, the second foundation for your life, faith. With faith you will, 1 John 5, you write that down, I know, you will overcome the world. The righteous will walk by faith. And then Hebrews 11, Peter, God is pleased 
only through faith. Amen? And through faith, you are saved. Not from eternal hell just, but by faith, saved from the irritation, from the frustration, saved from the negativity, saved from the lust, saved from, from the rubbish, saved from the, the compromise. You can be saved. You can, have, you can overcome through faith. Amen. Not through performance. Not through religious performance. Second foundation. The third one, the teaching about baptisms. What has that to do? It has to do with your identity in Christ. Because why? The first baptism that happened is you were baptized in Christ. You were baptized in Christ. When you were crucified with Christ, you died with Christ, you were buried with Christ, you were raised with Christ. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. Baptism, first of all, in Christ. And because you are baptized in Christ, that's why you are baptized in water as a testimony because you were baptized in Christ. That thing that people in water baptism, I'm here to lay down my old life. That's not truth. You lay down your old life when you were baptized in Christ, when you gave your life to Christ. I'm here to testify that through my baptism in Christ, I laid down my own life. You, that, that's no magical water there. Only through the blood. That's much more than magical. <laughs> it's so super, super natural. The power of the blood. Amen. So that's the third one is, I'm baptized in Christ. I testify through baptism in water about my baptism in Christ. And then I'm baptized also in the Holy Spirit. I'm baptized in fire. That's just four from a, a lot. But let's stay with that four. So that teaching needs to be established. What? We start again. Repentance from dead works. Not, that's not just repentance from stealing. Repentance from works that I think can be very good, but there's death in that pot. Even dead works in what we want to do for the Lord tomorrow. But it's dead works. God didn't say you need to do that. Make sure that repentance turn around through the grace of God and then by faith walk out of that place of sinning out of that place of failure out of that place of discouragement out of that place of depression walk out by faith so that you walk where into the place of identity into the place of I'm, I have my identity in Christ there's a life in Christ that is hidden your life the word says, your life is hidden in Christ. And it will stay hidden if I'm still just carrying in wara wara with the sin and trying to turn around, trying to turn around, trying to turn around and figure out faith. How, if I can understand and make my, my final decision, I'm finished with this. No, I know we're going to sin, my brother, my sister. Praise God for the grace. Praise God for the blood. Because only through the blood you can turn. You can turn. But then with faith from the word, you need to overcome. You need to overcome and run into your victory. No, run into Christ. Run into the Holy Spirit. Run into the fire. And don't be afraid of the fire. That fire is going to beautify you. That fire is not going to destroy you. Stay here and you are in a destructive fire that will destroy you. You are in fire if you like it or not. You are in a destructive fire of self, of selfishness, of flesh, of that that will lead to eternal fire. But when you gave your life to Christ, if you allow that fire, that fire will fight this fire. That consuming fire, God is a consuming fire. He will deal with the destructive fire in your life. They say, God, the consuming fire will deal with every destructive fire in my life. If I can surrender by faith, walk into the place of your identity in Christ. Because I have overcome. Why? Because greater is he that is in me than he who is in the world. Amen. Find your identity in Christ. Testify to the world through the baptism. And then let the Holy Spirit not just fill you, but you be baptized in the Holy Spirit and you be found in the fire. In the Holy Spirit so that the fruit will come forth, the character of God. In the fire so that you will be purified from the rubbish.
I baptize you, but there's a man, there's a one, the one, the lamb that will come. And he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Come to know the teaching of baptisms is foundational. Foundational. Everybody, repentance from dead works. Then, teaching of faith. Then, baptisms, identity. And from that place, knowing who I am, baptism with the laying on of hands. What? God's hand is on you. For what? For purpose. Your destiny, your calling need to be established. You, know, you need to know the teaching of what is your destiny? What is your calling? What is the purpose? What is the mandate? Why you are still here on earth? Why did you not just die and go to heaven when you gave your life to Christ? Because there's a specific purpose still on your life. So his hand is not just, is not just his blessing. Can I say that? His hand is keeping you away from heaven. In the sense of, it's not your time yet. I could long to be with him. Paul says, I long to be with my father. I long to be with God. Out of the body to be with him. But I'm in the body for your sake. Paul says. So his hand will keep you. My son, I need you to stay there. Even if your heart longs for him. Even if you say, Maranatha, Jesus, come. But he's hand is there. I have a purpose for you. That's your eye. You must be there in that country, in that nation, with that work, knowing that people, with that family, and with the gifts I've put in you as a human being here on earth. So therefore, you will stay there. You will be there. And that on the day when Jesus was sent to earth, and the Father released him, when he started with ministry, he opened the word and he said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because He has anointed me to do. He has anointed me for a purpose. The hand of the Father is on me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The anointing of God is upon me. Translate anointing of God. Spirit of God upon me. The other translation in the meaning means the hand of the Father is upon me. So Jesus is saying, I came to earth as the Son of God, and I'm here because the hand of the Father is upon me because He has anointed me to do the following. This is my mandate. This is my strategy. This is my calling. That's my purpose, why I am here. And that's where you need to be know, where you're supposed to know why is the hand of God on you? Why is His hand keeping you here? Not just by coincidence you didn't die. Don't fight death. He conquered the death. Hello? Death will work for you. The death of your flesh, death of the rabbis, death of the compromise, death of all those stuff. It must work for you. And the, die that, the day that you die is just going through to see the eternal beauty of who he is. Don't try and pre prevent death. Let death work for you. Amen. Life is Christ and death is Gain. Was was no. <laughs> Hand of God is on you. That's the fourth principle. Are you with me? Number five, the resurrection of the dead. Oh, that's one day. When you die, you will be resurrected. Yes, but not just that day. Because the one that you accepted, he is called the resurrection and the life. So the resurrection is already in you. Hello? Because... Crucified with Christ, died with Christ, buried with Christ, raised with Christ, seated with Christ in heavenly places. And you know, in this place, it's for tomorrow when you are walking in a resurrected life. This is all elementary teachings that need to be established so that we can go on in life and build a life. God must help us. So, in that place, we see uh, Romans 8, is it 11? Romans 8 verse 11. Now if the Spirit of God, who raised Christ from the dead, is living in you. It's like, okay, let's just think about this. Let's say, the Spirit of God, living in me, raised Christ from the dead. If the Spirit that is living in you, 
raised Christ from the dead, how much more will the Spirit quicken your mortal bodies, strengthen your mortal bodies to live for Him, to live for Him. That's what the Word says. The resurrection life, the resurrection power that is in you, that conquered death and conquered the destruction. That life in you, if you understand what that the Spirit of God did with Jesus through the empty tomb. That through the empty tomb, we all say, yes, I believe he was raised with the dead, from the death. But you, standing against death as a destructive force, you need to understand that. You need to know the impact of his resurrected life in you. That's a teaching, that's an elementary teaching for you to walk. So that in that day, when you are standing in victory, standing as more than a conqueror, you, you can just testify it's because of the Spirit of God in me. It's only because of the one who works in me. It's because of the one who raised Christ from the dead that is living in me. That's why I can have also victory. That's why I'm more than a conqueror. Because the conqueror is living in me. Victory is living in you. Yeah, as a name. Amen. That's the fifth one. The resurrection from the dead. And then eternal judgment. Eternal judgment where you will miss hell and go to heaven. Maybe you can see this one of the first principles. When you repented from dead works and turn around. I'm not heading to hell anymore. I'm going to him. I found him, and I'm going into more of him, 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 more of me, until the day, boom, all of him. And the more of him, eternal life, John 17, 3, eternal life is knowing him. So eternity is set in our hearts, the word says. So eternal life, when you on your way to hell, in destruction, God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, when the rebirth Eternity was set in your hearts. I'm going into more of eternal value. More of eternal value. More until one day, boom! I'm in the fullness of eternity. But if I'm wara wara and waste my life on earth, in that day, what you've built, the word says, will be burned away. And you will be saved as through fire. But you never experience something of eternal value on earth. Because you built with all the rubbish. You built with the circumstances. You built with your emotions. You built for, with when you like it and when, when you don't like it, you don't build. When, it all depends on what is happening around you. And all those stuff, how people respond to you. If people offend you, you will not give yourself anymore like this. <sighs> with other people, not with us. Never. As from today. In Jesus' name. No. Let's not waste our lives on earth. That after we come into that place, place, praise God for His grace that that rubbish will be burnt away. But I will still be saved as through fire. But immature in my spirit. Not childish in sin, but immature in my spirit. No, man. That's not what God has for us. Are you with me? So that eternal judgment is not to miss hell and go to heaven. That eternal judgment, Jesus says, the Father is not judging. Jesus says, I'm not judging you, but my word will judge you. But if you can allow the judgment of the word today on your flesh, and you deal with that rubbish, you deal with that thing, I feel like doing this, but the word says, hell is coming against Jesus. Where the word even, and Jesus says, the word also says. The word, the word also says. The word also says. And the devil left him. You carry on. You know the word in context. The, the thing was not, he knew some scriptures. He knew the context of scriptures. And the devil gave scripture. And he gave context. And the devil gave scripture, and he gave context. That's something else. 
And the context is always in the perspective of relationship, where things make sense. This will never make sense. Only in the context of relationship it can make sense. This is foolishness, foolishness to the world. But it's the wisdom of God. Wisdom is practical. It's the practicality of who God is in my life. It's So you, you entertain your flesh, your flesh will find this foolish. Your flesh will be frustrated. Your flesh will fight against this. Your flesh will want you to argue. But you know, this, this word will come to you many times through people, and you will not believe me, but they are not perfect. <sighs> your leaders, your husband, your wife, they're not perfect. We all know that, eh? But what am I saying? In the midst of what they bring to you, you better find truth. God, what through how that person spoke to me? You know, he spoke as if he was this Pharisee, was, you know, this and this and this. Now you can just sit there judging him. Or you can sit there and ask, Holy Spirit, what did you want to say to me? Even if the donkey would stop, you know? And the donkey say, why are you hitting me? But I, mean, I think then you actually will listen when a donkey speaks. Eh? <laughs> but if I could call that person, and he speaks like a donkey. You might mark how a donkey. Oh, oh. Something like that, eh? And you think, oh man, what irritating, whatever. You better ask Holy Spirit, God, what are you saying to me? Because there could be something in that person. No, oh, he's just judging me. He's pointing the finger at me. He's judging me. He's criticizing me. He's breaking me down. What in what he said is judgment on my flesh. Because there's no condemnation. No condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Where, what, 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 what? My spirit is perfect. Holy Spirit is Fullness of God in my spirit. My spirit is perfect. My spirit is not in condemnation. But there's condemnation. There's, there's judgment that must come on the rubbish in my soul, in my emotions, in my thought patterns, in my that, on all that, and all the fleshly huaras. God, tomorrow, I don't want to stand there ashamed and I, I realize no condemnation. I'm going to heaven. But what I've built on earth is just one, can I say, hell of a waste. No. I want to know today, while sitting here, I want to evaluate, this is rubbish, I cut it out. This is from God. As I walk out here, I'm going to build on more that is from God. Because four more foundations are laid in my life, with a life that will not fall into my loved ones. Because I had the wisdom as a wise builder to build foundations. I'm not foolish in laying foundations, just running for the building. Therefore, building on sand. God must help us. Amen. And in his wisdom, his wisdom will tell us sometimes, oh, uh, 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 come back, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, uh, come back, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, come back, let's do this. What happened when you were very small? Very small. Mom and dad said, ah, 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 we first going to do this. Ah, 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 first eat your beans and your meat, and then we talk about the ice cream. What was that? Ah, 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 these things are actually foundational for you. We never taught him that. But even the atheist out there, man, knows that. There's certain things foundational for the infant. What this passage is saying. That the infant's supposed to know. Are you with me? So let's go just quickly. Um, the, the real sermon for today in... Maya, I just want to read the introduction verse there. But let's just do the foundation that must be laid so that we can do restoration. If there's no foundation, there cannot be restoration of walls. So never mind building the walls. Restoring the walls in your life. Because my brother, my sister, the wall is where at the end of the day, this is Jerusalem, this is the world. Jerusalem means the habitation of peace. The habitation of peace. You must remember that. Write the other down. And the habitation of peace is not a, 
Een shield staat niet stil. Wat is een skiet stilstand? It's a ceasefire. It's not a ceasefire. That's not peace. Peace in the context of God, in his word. Shalom, peace, has to do with the presence of the Prince of Peace. The habitation of peace, Jerusalem, has to do with the dwelling place of the Prince of Peace. A place where you and the Prince of Peace, there's harmony. Peace has to do with a harmony, with a place in a relationship when I'm safe. When you and that person, you and your wife, you and your husband, you and that brother or sister, there's safety in being together. That relationship, you just know you are safe. Amen. And that place of a safe, secure Love relationship between God and the nations is called the new Jerusalem. But then for today, I need to know what is this side, what that is relationship in harmony with God, with eternal value, and what is that side. That is good ideas, but I need to repent from that dead works. This is destructive. And he can be so close to one another. And in building that wall, building those walls, Nehemiah, restoring the walls so that you don't, cannot just jump over, but you're getting certain things sorted out in your life. The enemy cannot just throw you over the wall. Hello. That is knowing the word. That is a cutting Two-edged sword between spirit and soul. Bien in mer. Translate. Bone in marrow, yeah, but honest. Ne? Okay. Are you with me? You need to be acquainted with the word. You need to get into the word. Because with the word, you're going to build the wall. With the word. Let's say, with the word, I built the wall. And the wall becomes the word. Amen. Because this is the, when you stand against the enemy that side and you are this side, this is the armor of God. Remember, not just the sword, it's the armor. Helmet of salvation is your mind being renewed with the word. Your breastplate of righteousness, your stature in the word. The belt of truth, truth is the word. The shoes for the readiness of the gospel, the gospel is the word. The shield of faith, faith is from the word. The sword of the spirit, that is the word. His sword, not yours. Amen. And with that armor you will stand against the enemy. But that we will come with to another time how Nehemiah had to put there the soldiers, the guys that could stand there with the armor while even building. It says here, it says here somewhere, you are still here? Yes. Nehemiah 2 verse 18. I also told them, after this man came and he saw what was happening with the walls. You can look in your life, my brother, and you can see a lot of walls being destroyed. A lot of walls not right. A lot of things that must be restored in your life. And you can come back and you can just moan and groan about all these things that still need to be restored. Relationships, things that need to be restored in the nations. Things that need to be restored in many ways. But he came back and he said, I also told them about the gracious hand of my God on me. Wow. <laughs> he came back with this major report that things are wrecked. The, the walls of Jerusalem, it is, it is in ruins. It's ruins. And you can look at the ruins in your life, my brother, my sister, and you can decide to say, I... No, and I saw the hand of God on my life. Why? Because foundations, I repented from dead works. I go by faith. I find my identity in Him. 
And because of that, I know my purpose. And I saw my God's gracious purpose on my life. Where I have the honor to serve him with a calling to go and build the walls. And he encouraged them with that. And then he says, they replied, let us start rebuilding. So they began this good work. Repentance from dead works. Go for the good works that God has prepared for you. Ephesians 2 verse 10. Amen. And then the enemy, they laughed, they mocked, they ridiculed. What are you trying to do? You know, tomorrow you, okay, let's start. What about speaking to somebody tomorrow that Jesus loves them? Wow, well, come on, man. What, what, what difference going to make? Well, your flesh is mocking you. Otherwise, you would have done that. No condemnation, but bring judgment on your flesh. Why have you not spoken to somebody about the love of God, about hope in Christ, about how they need to repent, about how, ah, are you with me? Go out, and when you are frustrated, even go, in, go out even more. But I must be led by the Spirit. It will not be from the devil when you walk past somebody and tell him Jesus loves you. It will not be the devil. Okay, don't worry about that. It will not be from the devil. That's how sometimes, especially earlier when I was like a student and sometimes I faced a lot of uh, intense challenges, let me say like that. Sometimes I would just go out on the street and say, God, what I'm going to tell them. And the one time I felt I must just tell them, God has an appointment with you. He has an appointment with everybody, even after death. If you, didn't, if you didn't accept the appointment before death, you will have an appointment after death into eternal hell. So I just went on the street, and as I was, would walk, I would just say, remember, God has an appointment with you. God has an appointment with you. <laughs> but, you know, it's so encouraging. Even if they, just, even if they would swear at you, ah, or whatever, you just carry on. It's like... Ah, oh, go and try it, man. Get a sentence. God loves you. Wow. Or a sentence, he has an appointment with you. Or God's going to speak to you. Remember, you are precious. Don't let the world mess with you. Many ladies, I said, don't let any man mess with you. You are precious. God made you precious. You won't believe it. I never had ever a lady swearing at me. Really. But walk away. Don't stand there as if you have an agenda. <laughs> she could wonder what now. Okay. And so there's one, there's one, uh, one colored guy. I walk. <laughs> Who knows the story? Who remember the story? One. Thank you. One. Lord. As I walk past, I said to this guy, um, God has an appointment with you. And I walk past, but he was speaking Afrikaans. He stopped. He rise and he said, <laughs> Am I in trouble? <laughs> but he was screaming it out, just like, Am I in trouble? <laughs> that God has an appointment with you. Ay, ay, ay. I'm saying, have the guts. Just go and share. Just go and share. Come on, man. Put some judgment on that rubbish flesh that gives you some professional excuses why you cannot speak about Jesus. Because he's so simple. He's so, really going to make a difference? Is it really going to make a difference? Oh, come on. I, I shared a story seven weeks ago about the guy that had to walk on the street and he was screaming out. Who can remember that one? As we start all over. Thank you. I will not take offense. Okay. So, thank you. Hallelujah. So this guy was walking on the street and the uh, Holy Spirit said to him, scream it out. Jesus loves you. And he was struggling with that. But in the end, I will not do it now. Emil will get a demonstrator. Maybe it's too, we are too religious to accept that. Jesus loves you. Jesus loves you. Okay, it's 10% of whatever. But thank you. So, uh, in the end, he just stood there and he screamed out, Jesus, love you! 
And he jumped, went into the shop. And he said, oh, Lord, come on. He don't, doesn't have to be like this. And he was just, he just sorted it out with the Lord. And this is now finished. And when, as he went out, Jesus said, God said, do it again. <laughs> and he did it again. And it was finished. And he just left it there and went home. And a few weeks or months, I can't remember, sitting in church, there was a guy and he testified. He said, I was standing on a building and I just wanted to commit suicide. I just said, I'm, I'm going. God, if you are there, I'm telling, giving you one chance. Tell me that you love me. <laughs> and he had this guy screaming and he stood back and he was totally disturbed. He said, God, if this is really you, say it again. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. Are you prepared to make a fool of yourself? To say this, this not horrific words, this intense words that Jesus loves you. Maybe it's just for your flesh, very intense, and that your flesh think he has the authority on a throne to bring judgment, to say, what will you say, what will you not say, what will you say, what will you not say. But maybe if these foundations are established in your life, you from the word will say, what will you say, what will you not say. And telling your flesh what it will say, instead of your flesh telling you when you will be quiet and when not. Somebody will be on the throne. Somebody will make the decisions. Somebody will call the shots. Either your flesh or the word. You get these foundations right. So when the enemy mocks you, and the enemy will mock you and say, oh, what can you do? What can you do? In uh, chapter, I'm finishing off with that. Chapter 4, verse 2. When the enemy heard about the rebuilding, this guy, this guy said, what are those feeble Jews? Die swakalunga. Those guys that actually can do nothing. Give me another English word for feeble. Those, no, not unique. Unique can be very positive. Feeble is like those guys that actually can do nothing. It's nearly pathetic. Die armsalige jode. It's the context in Afrikaans. Those guys that actually can do nothing. What are they doing? Will they restore the wall? Will they offer sacrifices? Will they finish it in a day? Can they bring these stones back to life from those heaps of rubble? From rubble. You will build a wall when you surrender to God. That's what you will call rubble. And the enemy will remind you of the rubble. From that rubble, you will build the wall of Jerusalem. If you allow the Spirit of God to lay the foundations. Amen. Amen. Please. So, going back after the enemy mocked them. Last verse in chapter 2. I answered, Nehemiah answered them by saying the God of heaven will give us success. Let's say that. The God of heaven will give me success. So when the enemy comes again who are you? What are you? No, you cannot do You cannot do that. And your flesh will mock you, not tell you, will mock you. Who many, how many of you know? It's as if the enemy will come and mock you that you cannot man. There's no way that you will succeed. There's no way that you will finish the job. The God of heaven will give me, will give us success. We, his servants, will start rebuilding. But as for you, you have no share in Jerusalem or any claim, any claim or any right to it. God brought you through the blood of Christ. If you stand in the name of Jesus and tell the enemy, you have no right in this body. You have no right in my life. You have no claim on me. 
Because God, God, my God, who I am serving, remember the serving, the serving whom I am serving, that means I submit in whatever you say that I will do. When I stand as a servant of God, God will give me success. Let's say, as a servant, God will give me success. No performance as a servant, but the fact that you respect his authority. A servant is one that respects his authority and says, I will do nothing without you. I will do nothing unless you tell me. That's what Jesus said. I do nothing if I don't hear my father says. I do nothing if I don't see my father doing. That's your model to in Christ looking at the Father. God, come and set us free. We need you, Lord. We need your grace. God, I forgive us for so many times that we've heard these teachings through your word. And we are not finished even with the elementary teachings of the word as foundations. Forgive us for struggling with these foundations. Forgive us for not putting in the focus to hear what you are saying and to try to understand in your word how to interact with your word as the truth. You are the truth, Lord. Help us to see you and hear you as we interact with your word. We trust you for that. God, I pray for every man, woman in this place that this morning must repent, that must turn around. Repentance from dead works. Repentance from my idea of doing. Repentance from, from things that I did that I thought it was for you, Lord, but God, it was, there was death in it. We turn around by your grace through the blood in Jesus' name, right now. And God, thank you for your faith through the word. I commit, Lord, that I will get into your word so that faith will be the product. And that I will walk as the righteous by faith. I will please you by faith. I will overcome the world by faith. Thank you for faith as a gift, Lord, through your word in Jesus' name. God, and thank you that I will come to understand I walk into identity as I'm baptized in Christ as I testify through baptism in water, as I will be baptized even more in the Holy Spirit and in fire. Come and deal with the destructive fires in my life through you as a consuming fire, beautifying my life day by day by day by day. Come and do that in your love, Lord. But thank you, God, that the Spirit in me, in me that raised Christ from the dead will quicken my mortal body. God, that when I'm weak, you say, I must say that I'm strong. When I'm weak, you make me strong, Lord, through the resurrection power. I will come to know the teaching of the resurrection. And I say, I will not fear death. But God, let death be a servant in my life, the death of my flesh and all the rubbish. Thank you, Lord, for, my, for a resurrected life in you, that I can walk as more than a conqueror in Christ Jesus and through you. God, an eternal judgment, even today. I don't want to stand ashamed in that day, Lord. But today, help me to deal through your word with that what is rubbish in my life. Help me not to justify myself. Help me not to find a security or fear rejection. But God, that I will deal with that what is rubbish in my life. I trust you for that, Father. That you will come and that you will come and do this for every man, every woman in this place. So that we can walk in the privilege, in the honor that you give us. And that is to build the walls of Jerusalem. We thank you for that, Father, in Jesus' name. So we pray and all say, Amen, Amen, Amen.